Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? This morning, we're going to be reading out of Nehemiah 9.38. Nehemiah is a pretty awesome book. And because of all this, we make a sure covenant. Because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it. Our leaders, our Levites, and our priests seal it. What are they talking about? Let's go up. Start in verse 32. Now, therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, and awesome God, who keeps covenant and mercy, do not let all the trouble seem small before you that has come upon us. Our kings and our princes, our priests and our prophets, our fathers, and on all your people from the days of the kings of Assyria until this day. However, you are just in all that has befallen us. For you have dealt faithfully, but we have done wickedly. Neither our kings nor our princes, our priests nor our fathers have kept your law, nor heeded your commandments and your testimonies with which you testified against them. For they have not served you in their kingdom or in the many good things that you gave them or in the large and rich land which you set before them nor did they turn from their wicked works. Here we are, servants today, and the land that you gave to our fathers to eat its fruit and its bounty. Here we are, servants in it. And it yields much increase to the kings you have set over us. Because of our sins, also they have dominion over our bodies and our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. And because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it. Our leaders, our Levites, and our priests seal it. Let's see if there's anything past this. Okay, no, there's not. They just go into the document of who's sealed that covenant. And it is a long list. All right. We'll go to the devotion. <laughs> there are many occasions in our experience when we may very rightfully and with benefit renew our covenant with God. After recovery from sickness, when, like Hezekiah, we have had a new term of years added to our life, we may fitly do it. After any deliverance from trouble, when our joys bud forth anew, let us again visit the foot of the cross and renew our consecration. Especially let us do this after any sin which has grieved the Holy Spirit or brought dishonor upon the cause of God. Let us then look to that blood, which can make us whiter than snow, and again offer ourselves unto the Lord. We should not only let our troubles confirm our dedication to God, but our prosperity should do the same. Whether things are good or bad, go to the Lord, give thanks. If we ever meet with occasions which deserve to be called crowning mercies, then surely, if he hath crowned us, we ought also to crown our God. Let us bring forth anew all the jewels of the divine regalia, which have been stored in the jewel closet of our heart, and let our God sit upon the throne of our love, arrayed in royal apparel. If we will learn to profit by our prosperity, we should not need so much adversity. If we would gather from a kiss all the good it might confer upon us, we should not so often smart under the rod. Have we lately received some blessing which we little expected? Has the Lord put our feet in a large room? Can we sing of mercies multiplied? Then this is the day to put our hand upon the horns of the altar and say, Bind me here, my God. Bind me here with cords, even forever. Inasmuch as we need the fulfillment of new promises from God. Let us offer renewed prayers that our old vows may not be dishonored. Let us this morning make with him a sure covenant because of the pains of Jesus, which for the last month we have been considering with gratitude. When good times come, praise the Lord. When bad times come, give thanks to the Lord. Any time, no matter what's happening, give praise and thanks to the Lord. 
we make a mistake, go to the Lord. Thank him. Thank him that we still have grace and mercy. <laughs> Praise him for forgiving us. When things are great and things are doing good and we're blessed and we're overflowing, we glorify the Lord, praise him, give thanks to him. We always forget that there's things we don't know that are happening in those things, whether they're good or bad. The good things are meant to bless us. The bad things, and even reward us in some cases, and the bad things are meant to teach us. No matter what, it's good. And so, no matter what, we can give thanks. A lot of people find that weird. Why are you going to thank God for, for terrible things that are happening to you? Look at you. Look at the state of you. Look at how, how you're struggling. Look at the pain that you're suffering with and all the other issues. But I have to give thanks. Because these things teach me. Keep me humble. Remind me. Remind me of the sure covenant. Remind me of what he has done and is doing and is going to do. Remind me to stay on the path. Let's say I step away from the Lord. Suddenly my health issues get better. Suddenly I have more money in the bank. Suddenly uh, the, the world loves me. And everybody comes to me, old friends, family members that didn't that stopped talking to me years ago. All of a sudden, I'm surrounded by them, and they're just falling all over themselves to, to praise me and do things for me. What have I gained? I end up in perfect health. I end up with riches galore. What have I gained? Have I gained anything? If that was the case, and I gained the world, the chances are I may have lost my soul. What have I gained? Nothing. So I walk this path where I have pain, physical pain, emotional pain, even spiritual pain sometimes, where sometimes we don't have quite enough money, where sometimes we have to make things stretch or do without. We don't hear from family and friends. People we used to hear from every day and we don't hear from anymore. They, they stop contacting us even if we contact them. We stay to ourselves and we're mostly alone. We enjoy our own company and each other's company. But what have we gained? By giving up all that, giving up the things of the world, what have we gained? A place in heaven. An audience with the Lord. And a much richer understanding of this sure covenant that the Lord has made with us. There has to be a trade-off. If you want the covenant, if you want this covenant of salvation, this covenant of peace, this eternal covenant of life, it requires a sacrifice. Jesus did it on the cross 2,000 years ago to win it for us. We have to sacrifice the things we love in this world. Which means we may, we may have to walk away from things. Which means we may have to suffer loss. Loss of communication. Loss of connection. Loss of friendships. Loss of family members. I lost it all. Even loss of our physical condition. Loss of funds. Loss of lifestyle. I've talked to multiple Christians over the years that said, when I was, before I was a Christian, I had money, I was making money hand over fist. Couldn't, couldn't find enough banks to store the money I had. And the one guy said, he goes, you know, the day I believed, I, I knew at that very moment everything changed. And he said, and it was like I was outside of the world when this happened. And when I got done with the excitement and, and, and came to these realizations, he goes, I went back. It's like I stepped back into time, back into the world. And while I was gone, everything changed. <laughs> 
He said, everything changed. He goes, and, and within months, you know, he said, inside the greater part of a year, I went from one person to another. Uh, I, I, I stepped back in. It's like everything changed. Nobody wanted to talk to me anymore. People looked at me with disgust, even if I hadn't said a word to them. Banks started canceling my accounts. Business partners started leaving me. And he said, and I, I got down to where I had just enough to survive. And he said, it was the greatest thing that ever could have happened to me. Because then I realized that all that was futile anyway, because it doesn't go with me. And he said that a couple of years later, he was sitting and he was thinking about those times, all those memories of that stuff. And he, he was like, I, I, I felt like, I do I want to go back to that so I can have a little bit more money to be able to get what I need? And he said, no. He even lost his wife and kids. And he said, no. He said, you know, she took all, all the extra money. He said, you know, he goes, it, it was that moment it dawned on me. It wasn't everything else that changed. It was me that changed. That's why they responded. They were always that way. But I was friends with the world. When I got saved, I became an enemy and everybody knew it at a glance because they don't serve God. He said, I realized it wasn't them that changed. It was me. They were always that way. And I was part of that. It was me that changed. That's being born again. He goes, that's, that's when I realized that's when I knew I was different. They weren't different. I was different because the Lord made me different. What do we gain? By siding with the world and joining in with what's going on. Oh, I'm, I'm still going to go and get my groceries and go mow my grass, go do what I got to do, help people if I can out there. I'm still going to go talk to people and then do whatever needs to be done, go to the doctor's appointments and that. I'm still going to vote in November. But none of that concerns me any, any more than it needs to versus this right here. It's the covenant that's more important. See, in this, in Nehemiah, the Jews realized, guys, look what we've done. We've had this great covenant. Look what we've done. And now that everybody in our own land has ostracized us, now that everybody has pushed us away, now we're all, suddenly our eyes are open to realize the mistake we made. We're going to ratify this covenant. We're going to remake this sure again, this covenant. See, when things were going good, they couldn't see it. But then things started going bad and their own people turned against them. Then they realized, oh, we made a huge mistake. Is that not the same thing that happens to us? Everything's fine until we change. And usually the Lord brings us down and shows us that we need that change. And then we realize we're the one that changed because he changed us. We have this covenant with us at all times. We enjoy the benefits of this covenant with God at all times. And while we look at the world and go, wow, I, you know, I, I miss talking to this person, I miss visiting that person. I can tell you that most of the, in most cases, those people don't want to talk to you anymore. That's why they don't contact you. And we find ourselves by ourselves even in a room full of people. But when I turn my head and look around me, even in that scenario, I realize I am surrounded by the host of heaven. I am in a family of an an, an, an it's unable to be counted how many members there are. I am in a group of people that follow God that you couldn't even begin to understand the chorus when they open their mouths and sing praises to the Lord. And I join my voice with them. And so whatever I think I've lost here, and in, in the case of being saved, it really wasn't a loss because... What good was, the, was was all that doing you anyway? And what good were those people doing you anyway? When, when you became a Christian, they became your enemy. 
without you ever having to say anything. I had this happen multiple times to me. There's something different about you. Then they wouldn't talk to me anymore. They knew. They could tell. I didn't realize it at the time, but I do now. What was going on? Whatever I think I've lost here, whatever we think we've lost here, we have gained a hundred times over there. And it's waiting for us. We just have to finish this course, finish this life. But it's waiting for us. Beyond our comprehension. And see, everybody up there wants to talk to us. Everybody up there wants to visit with us. Everybody up there wants to see us. In fact, the Bible says they're waiting in expectation for the revealing of the sons of God. That's us. Everything in creation is waiting for this. Angels included. All the creatures of heaven are waiting for this. So we have a, another family that wants us. Another another group that desires our presence. And it's just a matter of time before we're there. And so now that I start to see that, now that I start to view that because of this covenant, I now realize I'm not really losing anything here. I'm just sloughing off the stuff I don't need, but I'm adding on so much more that I do need. And that's my relationship with the Lord and all that goes with it. It's not just me and him sitting in a room. It's everything in heaven, everything in creation. And it's amazing. We have a more sure covenant, a perfect covenant. The Lord made it with the seed of Abraham. A lot of people miss that it says seed, not seeds. We're the seeds of Abraham or of the seed of Abraham. Jesus is the seed of Abraham because he's in the line of Abraham. And because we have faith in him, we are of him, which makes us Abraham's seed, makes us of the line of Abraham. So let us hang on to what we know we have. It's right here in the scriptures. All we got to do is read it. But let us learn more about it individually in our own direct communication with the Lord through his word. And start to become a little bit more familiar with what we have. Because the blessing that goes along with it is beyond comprehension. And the peace that comes from knowing this, from learning this and coming to that realization of why am I worried about what, I'm, what I feel like I'm losing here? I have so much more there. And there's a day coming when I'm going to go there and be able to experience it all. It starts to make losing anything here or what we perceive we're losing here, which we're not. We're just getting rid of stuff we don't need. That much less important and makes what we're gaining that much more important. And this we all have in Jesus Christ. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for your holy word, and thank you for this devotion. I thank you, Lord, that we have a covenant with you through Jesus Christ. And that that sealing of that covenant, that mark of that covenant is the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. Without the Holy Spirit, we couldn't know these things. Without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't even be here doing what we're doing. We wouldn't be here listening or, or commenting or praying or adding any of this. I told somebody recently, you know, the very fact that you're here asking these questions shows the Holy Spirit is working in you. Unbelievers don't do that. Unbelievers don't care. Those that are against us, irrelevant to them. The fact that we feel like we need to answer those questions, the fact that we feel guilt over our sin, the fact that we're struggling in those areas when the rest of the world around us isn't, and they think there's something wrong with us when we do, that very fact shows the Holy Spirit dwells within us. You can't have conviction unless the Holy Spirit is there. And so what a blessing it is for us to come to that place that we, where we know we have 
a part in this covenant, this covenant that you made, covenant of peace, covenant of reconciliation. Not only do the Jews, who have had thousands of years of history concerning this, but so have we. And what's funny is we've had that same thousand years right along with them. We didn't know it yet because it hadn't been fulfilled until it got, was until it was fulfilled in Christ. Then the revelation came that the Gentiles would also receive it because not only are you the God of the Jews, you're the God of the Gentiles too. You're everybody's God. They just don't know it. But we do. And I think that is a blessed understanding to be able to have that knowledge of knowing that you are our God too. And so, Father, all your promises that you've given concerning us in Israel, I pray that you keep them in their fullest form. All of the blessings that you have pronounced for us, I pray that we receive them with great gratitude. And everything that is contained in this covenant, Lord, make us to learn it, to believe it, to understand in some way, and to know that we are blessed because of it. Blessed beyond measure. And when we realize that, it makes what we think we don't have nothing because we realize just how much more we do have. If I lose everything on this earth, I have everything and then some waiting in heaven. For every one thing I think I lose on this earth, I gain a thousand in heaven. What is this life compared to the next? And Father, you have given us this and your word tells us this. What is this life compared to the next? We are part of the sure covenant. And, and how amazing is it to look back across history? And this is the, the, the rich advantage of being born later in history. And to look back and to see all these men, all these women, all these believers going through this and saying these words, not realizing, or maybe they did, I don't know, they may not have, not realizing what was going to come in the future and who was going to see it in the future. Did they realize these words were going to be written in books? Maybe not. That they realize that the people in the final generation were going to see it and come to faith because of it and gain understanding because of it. Learning from what they endured? Maybe, maybe not. But Lord, it is a blessing that we have this book right here telling us all these things. And what's amazing is we're going to meet those people in heaven. And they're going to ask us, what was it like reading about all that? in your age when we were so far separated from it. And we're going to ask them, what was it like living that? We are definitely a chosen generation, that's for sure. Lord, pour out your blessings upon your people. Give us faith unshakable. Belief and, under and, belief and, and trust immovable. And give us understanding, peace, joy, a knowledge of, of all these things in some degree. And may we glorify you in it all. May we be a blessing to you in any way we can. And Lord, may we never, ever forget. You never forget, but may, may we never, ever forget what's been done. And give you glory for it. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. It is incredible. It is amazing to see what this says, to think about, especially when we start to grasp the timeline. You know, a lot of people say, well, the law came first. No, the law didn't come first. The promise came first. The promise went to Abraham and to his seed. That was Jesus. Through him, we have access to it. The law came 430 years after Abraham. It's in, it's in the Bible. So the law was a placeholder for what was already done until Jesus came to fulfill it. And we start to realize the timeline and how that, how that lays out paints a much more different picture on what the importance is on whether we should be observant of the rules 
or whether we should be observant of the covenant. Because the rules aren't the covenant. The law isn't the covenant. The law is a placeholder within the covenant. But now the Lord has nailed the law to the cross. So what's left? The covenant. How did the covenant come about? Faith. When we walk in faith, we become members and partakers of that covenant. By faith, we are of the seed or of the people of Abraham. By faith, we are part of Jesus Christ. And when you come to that place, it's such peace and such joy that just flows over you. Because you come to that place knowing you have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. If this is where I am, this is where I am. I don't have to worry about the other stuff. I don't have to run out there and find Christians I disagree with and condemn them. I don't have to go out there and search out every single thing I find wrong in anybody in their belief and try to correct it. If they believe, they're his. And the Lord will deal with those misunderstandings because I know I have them too. What it causes me to do personally is it causes me to realize that my entire life was geared toward this moment. My entire life was designed and laid out to lead me to him. And I look before I was saved and realize I always had a knowledge of him being there. I always looked to him even before I was saved, long before I was saved. I never realized it. So just like this covenant was from long ago, his promise was given to me long before I existed. And he's done that for every single one of us. And it is a glorious to witness. Amazing to come to that place knowing that I wasn't by accident. My salvation didn't come by accident. I didn't just happen to step in and go, oh, and somebody grabbed me and pulled me in. Hey, you're a part of this party. Go go that way. Stick a sticker. Say, hey, hello, my name is Christian. Shove me in the door. Go in there and mingle. And I was just walking by taking groceries home. It's not wasn't by accident that I ended up here. It was on purpose, by design. You and I are here on purpose. Our salvation, our conviction of the truth, our, our, our desire for him, it's not by accident. And that gives me great peace of knowing that I'm not an accident. You're not an accident. The Lord chose us. The Bible tells us this. He chose us from the beginning. So this covenant, before it ever existed, he already knew who he was going to have join this covenant. His wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is beyond our comprehension. And I love it. I'm glad he's in control because I for sure would mess it up. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.